Man, I feel evil, I know where the demons hide. Man, I'm on scheming. Right, welcome back to the pod, guys. We're here again, another episode, another day. Uh, keeping it moving, um, keeping it pressing. We've got a special guest here today. Um, can't even keep track of where he's been and where he's going. Uh, but we've got Josh, aka Jones, filming in the house today. Let's thank go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Feeling uh, a little bit nervous. My first time in front of the camera. I'm used to being behind, but we're going to make the most of it. And yeah, yeah, going little... to be a great episode, I think. A little 180, but I'm sure you'll be fine. You'll yeah. be all good. Um, cool. So I preface this in the podcast every single time. Um, but basically, and I think I might have mentioned it to you before, but essentially the podcast is here to kind of have a conversation with people that are in that 1% and mm-hmm. 1% not being financially, but being kind of being able to push through the adversities of being in a crowd or a big population of people that all want to do the same thing. Yeah. And being able to go, right, okay, why have you been able to get through? Like, what it, what is it taking? And kind of like more about yourself in that sense. Okay. So, yeah, first question is, um, what was it like kind of being in school growing up, all that sort of stuff? What was that like? Um, school was school's interesting. I've always said I'm not the most academic person. Um, creative, yes. Didn't get a lot of GCSEs. Didn't enjoy school so much, but anything that was creative, like, um, we did creative studies, um, media studies. Obviously, that's where I excelled. Yeah, <laughs> it's not so much in maths and English. It's yeah, past English, still haven't passed maths, but we're still doing, still doing all right with it. So, yeah, school, school was interesting, but I think it's also great because it also gave me some boundaries of like finding my circle and finding who I relate to more. And mm-hmm. I kind of found that when I was in year eleven, I found yeah. people that I kind of connected with more because I skate, they skated. Yeah, they always like wanted me to bring up my camera and take pictures and Polaroids. So whatever it was, I think when I got older, I found that, and I was like, okay, cool. This is what I actually want to do. Yeah, no, hundred percent. It's crazy, isn't it? I feel like with school, for whatever reason, people are exactly what you just said are able mm. to find themselves because this is kind of like if they're sad, they're like, this is shit because yeah. you can't. It's um, like that, that saying, it's like you can't teach a fish to climb a tree. So it's, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of like that overarching thing for everybody it doesn't always work, but then it allows you to kind of figure out what you want to do, how you want to 100%, do it. 100%, 100%. Um, do you have any favorite skating brands growing on? I'm just curious about because I used to skate as well. Oh, yeah. Skate. I feel like everybody in the creative industry used to skate, BMX, scoot or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, girl's really good. Yeah. Really like girl. And I like cruising. So I have like a Globe Cruiser that I've had since like 2015. Really? It's like beaten to shreds, and but I still love it. Still ride it every now and then. So yeah. I think that Glo- Globes will be my favorite. Nice, 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 nice. Um, and what was your first experience with like filming, editing? Like, what was that kind of like moment? Do you have? Do you remember that? Um, my my dad's a photographer, so nice. I've always kind of had a camera like around me growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I it might be of this moment but I don't know exactly, but when I was like eight or nine, I grew up in Jamaica. Um, but when I was like eight or nine, my dad uh, brought me my mum's digital camera, like yeah. a small little like Olympus, something like that, where you like flip the flip the screen down and yeah, then the yeah. camera comes out with like a little flash. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just running around the house, like taking photos on it. So that's like my first core memory of yeah. using the camera. It wasn't until we got back from Jamaica and I was like 10 or 11 at this point, And my dad got me like a little digital camera. Um, not a, not a DSLR, I can't change the lens, so just like a little zoom in one. And then started shooting like skate edits with my friends on there. I used to scooter at, the, at that time. So started doing scooter edits with my brother and like my other friends. And I think it just progressed from there and just kept it building, kept it going to, really? where, to where it is now. <laughs> Love that. And um, yeah, because this, the, and did you enjoy it from like the offset? It was just like this. Is, it... Yeah. I think it was like the piecing after shooting something and then seeing it back and then piecing it together. It's like you relive the whole memory again. Yeah. And I think that's why I always still try and bring my camera out and I would like try to shoot more on film. So I bring my film camera pretty much everywhere I go just to slow down how much I'm just shooting and just capture that one moment instead of just shooting a thousand pictures. Yeah. And then to be able to look back on it and relive that time where I can look at the picture and almost play like a mini film in my head of things that I've done and places that I've been, I think that's always quite special. Yeah. No, 100%. And I always find it fascinating as well, kind of having an idea, a conceptual idea, yeah. and then be able to conceptualize it and put it- Execute it and, and have it come it. to yeah. life. That's what I wanted, and yeah. it's there. Crazy. Um, 
Okay. And what did you have any influences at the time in terms of what you were creating at all? Or I, I don't, off the top of my head, no. Mm. I think if I was to look back on it, like certain YouTubers, um, Ben Brown was a big one. Is like, Brown, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you know him as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know a lot of people that know him. He used to be in the like a Olympic uh, rower, didn't he? Mm. And then used to like go to South Africa. But yeah, I think watching his videos, the travel side of things is something I've always wanted to do. Like, for, I remember before it's now trendy. When I was like fourteen, thirteen, I my biggest dream was to buy a camper van, like pimp out the camper van, yeah. travel around Europe. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. always the biggest goal. Um, so I think yeah, after going on time and seeing Ben do it. Um, fun for Louis as well. Fun for Louis. Yeah, I remember watching what, these guys. Crazy guy. Crazy, crazy He's creators. Crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, and I just, just watch these people. Obviously, Case Nice as well is obviously a big guy. Um, but yeah, just watching these people like travel and filming. I was like, that's just what I want to do. I just want to travel the world and film. Yeah, I can thankfully say, obviously, support from my mum and dad that I've achieved that. Um, not the traveling and filming that I was thinking, um, but still traveling and filming. So it's, yeah, can't complain. Amazing. So <clears throat> obviously there's two sides to filming. Mm -hmm. There's a kind of being on camera and filming and being off camera and filming. Yeah. <laughs> like how comes you didn't want to be, well, not that you didn't want to be, but how comes you ended up being behind the camera? Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, one that I, I don't know if I can answer exactly. I think where I just started picking it up and then started shooting on the camera myself, I never really had the idea to like put it on a tripod and sit down in front. But I feel like obviously I know a lot of people started from that like trying to do that the more vlog style yeah but yeah i always just kind of like the cinematography side of things more mm. like getting the right shots like making it look clean obviously yeah, i went to college to study chelsea college which was um i think that was very good for me because all i could do was focus just on filming yeah like, there wasn't other courses there wasn't other things that i had to do it was literally just all filmmaking really? so yeah i think i think that really helps as well really and the, the that do you reckon that the course itself, do you reckon that contributed to kind of like today or is it just kind of like that environment that allowed you? I think more so the environment and networking as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of like the, some of the people who I work with now mm. are from people that I've even met skating or from college. So really? it's like, it's the way it's all gone full circle of them helping me when I was younger, when I was like 16, 17. Yeah. Um, my one friend in Taylor, my one friend in particular, Taylor Casa, he, uh, great DOP, like just great at editing. He brought me onto a, a music video with a band called Bilk, who are now very good friends with. Um, but at the time it was like their first proper music video, didn't shoot anything that serious. And then that was what, five years ago. And now they're doing on tours of like Louis Thomason. Um, really? Yeah, they, they go on like a big UK tour every mm -hmm. year. They're selling out venues, but that was all from me being like 50, 16 at the skate park, I get a call like, yo, do you want to come shoot BTS? I was like, <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, why not? I've got nothing better to do. So yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. So yeah, that's what I wanted to find out as well. Cause obviously very clearly very talented, but if you've got a specific type of like shooting or filming that you like to do or. Um, as I've been traveling quite a bit more, especially this year, <clears throat> especially more this year, uh, more the cinematic side of things. Yeah. Like kind of clean shots, nice sound design, like to like encapsulate where you are and create a certain feel. Like that's what I've been focusing quite a lot more on. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, I've seen you, you know, kind of about with like the, the, the A stars of YouTube and stuff yeah. like that, especially in the UK. So massive props for that because that's, that's so sick to see. Mm. Um, super inspiring as well, especially for like, you know, younger guys and girls that are seeing that sort of stuff and just being like, because I think a lot of people don't understand. It's like, there's still so much, you get so much from kind of being able to be the one to make that happen. Mm. They're like the personality on camera, but then you make it happen and it's kind of, you're responsible for it. You're like the producer of the, yeah. the video. <laughs> so, uh, you know for, I, mean? I work with um, AJ, AJ a lot more. I do like the beta squad as a whole, but yeah. like more of the run and gun. They have like a whole, team for the studio sets and things like that yeah yeah but when it comes to like aj's videos and yeah it's more taking that kind of director role obviously he does the short list treatments plans everything yeah i just kind of bring the production side of things and help like lighting and cameras and things like that mm. and what was the first video you did with a youtuber that was it's coming up i think it's, oh yeah it's been a year three years now since working with like a base squad member it was kenny and that was the first hand to leave the Lamborghini wins it. Sorry, last hand to leave the Lamborghini wins it. 
Really? Yeah. So okay. I was there. I got I got called on once again. Thank you to Taylor because he got the call first. But he was like, I don't need the work right now. Josh is trying to push himself more. So then the other person called me, and then yeah, sure. The following day, straight afterwards, I think AJ liked what I was doing there, and then wanted to uh, bring me on to like more shoots with him. Mm. And that, yeah, three years ago. Man. And I'd get another shoot with him tomorrow, I think. There you go, see? Yeah. That's the persistence. Um, what was that feeling like, like being able to do that? Because obviously, were they on the, the were they, where, what were, where were they in terms of their kind of come up? So I did my first video with them in 2021, 2021 March. Yeah. I think they were already so pretty big. Yeah, yeah, like yeah they're, sure. Like obviously, I know Chunks and Nico have been known for a long time. Um I don't know all the other boys have as well in their own respective fields. But I think, I'm, well, obviously it's now three years later, they're way bigger, almost hitting 10 million subscribers now. And the things that they're doing, the places that they're going, it's just incredible. Yeah. It, once again, it's very inspiring to see. Mm. Now, as you say, like being around in that group and that influence is kind of make me think like, well, if they can get themselves like that high and that persistent and consistent with work, then yeah, I must be able to do something as well. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. And what's been your favorite country to shoot in so far? I have two. Okay. The first one, definitely Qatar. Okay. Like the hospitality, the treatment, the people there are just so friendly. Yeah. Um, and Australia as well last year. Australia was just crazy. Such a huge vibe, but a lot of hours working and filming, but definitely worth it Like for the content that we produced. See, everyone says that, but like, I, I've not, I mean, I've not really looked into australia too too much but like i think i even saw like chunk saying it philly said a few other content creators a few people i've spoken to they're like australia is like the place for like reaching out to new audiences australia is definitely up there really yeah like i did a podcast like a kind of like on the phone one with an australian person who does it um the morel show like really nice guy asked really good questions so i've done it with him and then or they like from just from that one interview he's not like big big but still had people like engaging with me like shouting me out which was just crazy to see all from just like a smaller uh smaller person doing the podcast really? super nice guy and like super friendly amazing amazing yeah because that's that's what i've heard like they really show love oh massively like, i feel do you know what it is i feel like it's especially with artists as well you've got like where you're from but then once you branch out because it's something that's like new and exciting and yeah stuff like that people, people like, yeah definitely and then they're like oh it's it's almost that exclusivity thing of like i know about them first like, i want to be there first yeah fans, <laughs> things like that but if you're from like london or wherever they're kind of harder to get it we know to him or know someone better type thing yeah 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 because you've got like people that have gone clear now like central sea and then he, he's now probably garnering more fans from london because he's just around so so much yeah but then in europe and stuff obviously it's just gone crazy yeah definitely um, you got a dream country you want to shoot in? Oh, is there some mad settings? Dream country to shoot in. I I did Thailand recently last month with AJ, but we were only there for like two days. Two days? Yeah, just in <laughs> shoot for two days or three days and then straight out. Oh, so shit. I would love to go back to Thailand and like shoot more there. Mm. Kind of go to more the south side, I think, where all like the beaches are and like the insane views and mountains and things like that yeah would love to do that interesting so yeah obviously you've got a lot of content and you know things to show under your belt for filming for everybody else will you get in front of the camera at any point um potentially in the future yeah <laughs> potentially in the future not set anything on camera now kind of the more cinematics that i'm doing yeah then yeah because you know i like to try and talk to it more still Trying to adjust to the way I look on camera, which is obviously a weird, uh, is weird, weird. To, yeah, weird graphs <laughs> to get used to. But um, yeah, I think I will, because it's like then you're a bit more personable. Yeah, people can see you, and then they can put a face to who's talking, and then they can relate to it a bit more. Yeah, as you say, like me coming on this podcast is obviously a great thing because then people are kind of seeing me, seeing what I do, which I didn't really think would be the career that I'd start going down. But yeah, if it's working and you know getting good traction from it and people are liking it, then why not? Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And I think nowadays as well, I don't know if you agree or not, but it, you can't whether you're a, a, a rapper, YouTuber, streamer. No, it doesn't matter what you are, mm. artist, singer, whatever it may be. Even if you do country music, whatever it is, you can't just be that thing. You no. need to be marketable. You need to show that personality. You Most definitely. Because kind of, I was watching 
it was actually the Chunks and Philly podcast um, a couple of days ago with Cow and Chip. Yeah. yeah. And he was just saying, like, people just want that raw kind of, like, engagement. They want to get to know somebody. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think, especially with, with the skill set you already have, paired with kind of, like, your personality and stuff. Because I think the, the interesting part as well is I think there's been a, because we've seen it as well, there's been a big, um, like, insurgence of people wanting to know about how things work. Yeah. Do you know what the I mean? behind the scenes is behind the, t- the scenes. It's definitely a big thing right now. Yeah, I think it always will be a big thing because no matter what you're doing, whether it's a multi-million pound production video, whether it's a music video or film, yeah, it's always cool to then look behind, like um, Blue Planet, for example. Yeah, David Attenborough. Yeah, I would always want to know how did they get those shots? Like, yeah, yeah. what was their process of creating this? Like, what was the storyboard looking like? 100%. And like all the underwater sounds, it's like they're not actually there. It's all Foley sound. Yeah. So they will add it in there. So it was like, I want to see them in like a Foley lab, like creating the sounds and you can picture it as well. Yeah, that's crazy. I think, yeah, the B-test is definitely a route that I'm trying to go down more. Um, trying to be more active on TikTok because that's the way the world's going, unfortunately. But yeah. it's also a good thing. Um, and trying to just post more BTS content on there of like, today in a life of shooting with like AJ or Chunks or yeah. Philly or just like as the crazy trips that obviously I've gone away on. Yeah. Just show it. I've shot them. It's now just about editing it, the voiceover and then getting it out. Yeah. And then, you know, hopefully people see that and get the traction from it. 100%. And I think you're in a good spot, even even if you were to do it even next year or whatever, just because I feel like over the years of YouTube, it's grown and established so much. Yeah. But it's almost watered the da- not, not watered down so obviously still people are getting mad views and money and stuff but it's almost watered down in the sense of kind of like polished finished video this is what you watch mm. like you say that I didn't even think about that but like David Attenborough behind the scenes would be nuts yeah like that would be crazy <laughs> Some, sometimes at the end of them they show the behind the scenes of how they did it really it's like yeah you, but you just want more yeah it's like exactly. I, I want a full hour long BTS of like how you did this yeah 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 of course because I feel like there's some I don't know. I think people like respect honesty and authenticity. Yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah, you've got this really great polished video, but it's like, look at all the hard work that went into it. And we were having a chat yesterday. It was really interesting. It's like, you know, when you go to like a rave and you, or you go to like a festival or a show yeah. and you're like, this is incredible. But like part of that is like the lighting design. No one even... Um, like, yeah, you know set up I mean? and things like that. Yeah. So that that is really, really fruitful, 100%. Um, especially if you're in the right circles, obviously, like you are at the moment. Um, okay. And have you got any, this is an, I'm really interested to, to find out. Have you got any kind of directors for movies that you kind of like are inspired by? Mm, I'm not a huge, just going to sound bad being like being in the film industry. Yeah. I'm not actually huge, huge into films like that. Really? Like, I can enjoy good cinematography. Yeah. I enjoy like obviously a good film. Yeah. But I think when it comes to like standout directors or DOPs in film, I don't actually just know names like that. Is it? Like, yeah. But like, but I'm kind of the same with music. Like, if I hear a song and I like it, I'll know it. But if someone says, oh, it's so-and-so, I'd be like, I don't know who that person is. <laughs> but then they play the song and I'm like, oh yeah, I know this, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. I feel like I'm a bit, in, a bit the same of when it comes to films. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so it's just kind of a, a visual audio kind of inspiration. Yeah. Obviously, than... Guy Ritchie tsk, creates amazing films. One of my favorite films right now is The Gentleman. Yeah. It's like cinematography, the scripts, the actors. Like, it's just, it's a very, very good film for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's just so cool how people can, especially in the film world, how you can just carve out your own style. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And you could watch a film and be like, oh, well, that's that director. 100%. That's that director. Yeah, I feel like that with like Christopher Nolan, who did like Tenet. Um, what was that mad film with Leonardo DiCaprio in the Dream World? Shit, what was it called? In Inception. Inception. Is it Inception? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then all the Dark Knight movies. As yeah, well. but yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, I'll know the film, and I think they're great films. Yeah, but I wouldn't have known the director's name off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, have you found yourself doing that as well? Have you kind of got like your knacks in different areas in terms of your film and editing? Have you kind of like carved out your style yet or do you feel like you're working towards it still working towards my style i can i can kind of differentiate it when it comes to youtube videos i feel like i can sometimes give it a different feel mm. but as it's pretty self-explanatory as well when you're watching it it's like nico taught me the best if someone's talking pan that camera straight to that person 
like if you're talking about something that they're pointing at, pan to it because then the people can visually see what's going on in the area. Mm. So like, I don't know, we did a trip to Monaco mm. and I shot a video with Nico out there. Mm. And it's like, the key thing is if he's talking about, we, so we blagged our way into a Bugatti private event on this yacht. He's in Did the video. Did you film that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That video was fucking hilarious. Yeah, the guy has no social anxiety. Like, <laughs> yeah, when it comes to filming the public how, now, So how like, do you feel in that? In no six, I'm My like, heart, yeah, I'm honestly, like, heart is racing. Really? <laughs> because he says, he walked on there and said, I'm M. Huncho, like this famous rapper. I saw that. And I'm like, so behind, I'm like behind the camera, I was just thinking, oh, like, what, it, what it takes is a Google search and like, it's over. Yeah. But um, it works. Like, it actually works. We blagged our way on there. We sat down. They offered us, like, drinks and food and things like that. Really? Yeah. Like, so, yeah, filming with him has definitely taught me a lot in filming YouTube. Mm. Like, just being on the ball of, like, if someone's talking, pan to it. Like, always try to capture a lot of B-roll to create the feel. Yeah. Kind of what you do in cinematography anyway. Yeah, but yeah. apply it to the YouTube content. Yeah. Okay. Um, on that note, then, if it's that, aside from that, what's been, like, the craziest moment where you've been filming? You're like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I don't know. Yeah. There's, there's probably a few yeah I think the recent trip to Qatar was definitely a highlight like I was on Chunks' team um, like filming for Johnny and the walkout with like 35,000 people just going absolutely insane mm. and I'm like one of the first people walking out like filming was just a crazy crazy feeling really yeah just that many people screaming going crazy for like you know people who probably started their videos in their bedroom like filming on their on their own cameras putting in serious hours to now performing in front of 35,000 people is, yeah, just crazy to even think of. Yeah, I can't imagine what that must have felt like for you because I went to the charity side of my match, the most yeah, yeah. one, and we had, like, incredible seats. Mm. Like, we could see Mr. Beast. Like, it was not far away. Yeah. Us. Like, we were literally on court side, like, pitch side, sorry. And that alone was nuts. It, I felt like, um, have you ever watched Harry Potter? Yeah. You know, Goblet of Fire? N not off by oh, not yeah, off yeah, by yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I know, I know it. But you know the <coughs> scene. He said even living in that film, I can't remember. But the scene where they're like at the Quidditch World Cup and they're like flying around. Oh, we'll see, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, another scene. I thought I was in a fucking Harry Potter film. <laughs> it's crazy, but just seeing that as well, like exactly what you said, like people in their bedroom is just yeah. insane. Just to where it is, like Speed was there as well. Yeah, just and it's so funny. Like Speed is completely different off camera. Have you met him? Uh, yeah, well, he was he was playing at the game as well. Okay, but like when when he's not live or anything, just normal guy just sitting down and have a normal conversation with him but as soon as live is on his like da -da -da, like crazy energy jumping around doing god knows what it's just yeah it's really cool to see that you say behind the scenes for it as well yeah exactly that in my eyes is actually more impressive than if he was months like that all the time yeah you know what i mean <laughs> to turn that on and off like so polarized it's crazy yeah N nico does it very well very well really? like he still trolls like you see him on videos like I'll just be sitting uh, like the beta house and I'll probably be like editing or like film with AJ and he'll just like send you for no reason. He'll be like, I was like, oh, like where are my headphones? And he's like, oh, you checked up in there? And I look up in the corner, there's obviously, there's obviously nothing there. But like anything to just catch a bite ends up doing. <laughs> but yeah, it's obviously really funny as well when he does it. Yeah, it seems like the tough guy that loves a nibble. <laughs> <laughs> that loves it. Oh, go on, let's go. I think going back to your point of like stand up moments yeah i think another one was in australia yeah said in the outback okay. i think i think that was uh another like what the hell am i doing here <laughs> like yeah, from yeah. a filming type kind of thing but like just an amazing video did like 18 hours of filming that day yeah hours. like loads of walking stayed in like the middle of nowhere okay but just kind of the vibe of like you know you, you we've checked all this way yeah and then we've got to get back and get on a flight because then we're going to like we was in Sydney, so we went to Melbourne. Mm. So we had to actually get back that day to catch the flight later on. It was just like crazy and manic, but you know, kind of enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, logistics, right? How the, how do you plan and film and take equipment for an 18 hour shoot? <laughs> um, That's nuts. Don't think anybody was expecting it to be that long. Um, but setup that I have now is like, um, well, now I've got the FX3. So I have that with like a V-mount battery. So the V-mount battery will last me all day. Like, Seriously? Yeah, all day with, without any worries. Obviously, it's a heavy bit of kit to be carrying around. Yeah, yeah. It's probably get back in the gym to start moving it a bit better. <laughs> but um, yeah, last me all day. And if not, I have like another six spare batteries just in case. Like if that does die, I know I can probably film like two days straight with mm -hmm. like no charge on anything. Yeah, yeah And obviously, yeah. lots of SD cards mm. <laughs> backed up. 
um, drone you can't really do anything but have more batteries for. So yeah, they they're... pick and choose the right time to get the drone. They're really bad for battery, aren't they? They're like terrible. Yeah, Two, I did just upgrade to the Mini Four Pro. Okay, and that's pretty good, like half an hour of flying, which is incredible. And is like the obstacle of no, 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 not with the DJI Mini Four. No, I'm saying like normally. Oh, uh, twenty. Oh, okay. Twenty. Yeah, 20, 25. If you're flying it, obviously, in strong winds, you're flying against it. Probably like 15 minutes because it's obviously using so much battery. Right. But um, I don't know if like an AJ video where the drone's just hovering to get like a bird's eye view. It'll last like 25 minutes. But then the new one could probably do like 35 minutes. Right. Amazing. Interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. I just always wonder about the logistics of that. Yeah. Having it out, like literally in the outback or like in some like mad harsh weathers and stuff. And it's just like, Still filming. Yeah, yeah, still, <laughs> still, still keeping cameras rolling. Yeah, that's great. I think always just be prepared for the worst as well. But I always try and have like a plastic bag with me because English weather, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. To, even if it's just you put it over the camera, mm. something like that, or didn't have it when we was in the outback because I wasn't expecting it to rain. Yeah. But um, just like threw the North Face completely over me and then get the camera tucked in and little things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So th- those were some standout moments in terms of like what the hell was going on. Were there any kind of like moments where you were like worried or kind of like shitting yourself like this is really techie? Because I can imagine filming with Nico, it must be mad. Like I remember watching the when he went to the like the gallery and stuff. And stuff. Oh god, yeah, yeah. with uh, with um, Gideon. Yeah, yeah. Like being in those situations must be mad. Have you got any like stand up ones like that where you're like, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do it. Um, I hope I can talk about this. Um, <laughs> the video didn't come out. It was with Beto and Monaco. So there's like a rich versus poor video. Right. Um, so me and Nico had no issues the first day filming. Like every, everyone was nice. Everything went so smooth. Like got amazing shots, flew the drone. Like everything was great. The following day when uh, Chunks and AJ joined us to film for Lander Beta Squad video, um, we ended up stopping by the police because I was flying my drone. But the, obviously the day before I had no issues, no nothing. Um, they asked us to bring the drone down, which obviously I did. And uh, they were like, where are your passports? Obviously, we, we, we want to get the names taken down. So we kind of just are like, you know, we don't have them. We left up the hotel, et cetera, et cetera. Things ended up getting really heated. And then I was like shouting, I was like, you know, we're going to find you. This, You can get arrested. You have to leave Monaco right now. And they're like, delete all the footage. So while they're telling me to delete all the footage, I'm like trying to like be cooperative, like, you know, be friendly, be nice, put a smile on. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm like showing him what I'm doing. But as I'm showing him, I've like selected all the drone shots and downloaded them to my phone. And then it's taken like 10 minutes for it to download to my phone. But I'm saying, yeah, yeah, no, it's like, it's getting done. It's like deleting. But I'm showing him the loading bar of it coming onto my phone. But yeah, it's just taking time to delete. It's taking time to delete. Um, and it'll look, look no delete, way. clear, have all the drone shots on my phone. Um, yeah, long day of filming that one. Did that work? Yeah. <laughs> not, the highest, not the highest quality, but it was still pretty good because it was downloaded to my phone over yeah. like some terrible 4G. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, yeah, still managed to keep all the drone shots and got a hundred pound, a hundred euro fine flying the drone. Serious? Yeah. Wow. Is it because a lot like needing a license and shit? Not only license, I, where Monaco's, as you said, that 1%, it's like people aren't really trying to have flats or certain things been shown online. True. So I think that perfect sense. Yeah, like privacy. And we're right next to... What's the famous hotel? Um, Monte Carlo Monte Casino. Carlo, yeah. So it was literally a few, like probably two minute down steps um, away from it. And I was just flying it, getting aerials. Mm. But the shots are beautiful. So yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> uh, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Yeah. Um, what's, have you had a moment where you kind of pinch yourself? I know you obviously kind of mentioned that before, but just be, like being somewhere, like maybe a hotel, something like that, where you're kind of like, you know, humble upbringing, skateboarding, filming on a digital camera to kind of go be in a moment being like, what the hell? Like, yeah, every time, every time I do a trip, um, I like, I journal as well. So oh, nice. I think it also gives me time to then reflect of what I'm doing and like where I am. Yeah. The things that I'm that. seeing, the people who I'm meeting, like the first guitar trip was just crazy because um, met Neo in the club um, and he was like singing. Le- Neo, Neo. Yeah, Neo. Yeah. <laughs> And I like got him to I managed to get a video with him. He's like, yo, shout out to Jones Film. And it's like, even like that alone was crazy. That's um, wild. Playing paddle with Mo Farah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's just like so random. Like I just have to make sure I get it in my journal because, you know, 10 years time, hopefully I still have that journal. And I can just look back on all these memories and think, 
like obviously it's on YouTube anyway or it's on my Instagram, but yeah. like actually having like a physical write down to read back through is just it's crazy to think. Yeah. And is that the, is that the, why, why did you want to, like, why did you initially start that? What, journaling? Yeah, was that the reason? Um, no, journaling was from uh, bad life experiences. <laughs> really? Not, not, not like terrible in terms of like death or killings or and nothing crazy like that, but yeah. just more mentally for me. Yeah. Like more um, emotional challenges, I would say. Yeah. Like certain situations that I would have been in uh, from certain people, maybe like think twice about uh, situations. So I always learned to communicate more with a lot of people and like be open, try to be more open with my parents and tell them how I'm feeling and be open with like some of my closer friends and be like, you know, th this is what it is. But then I think what helped me the most was going for walks in nature and journaling, like, and listen to like good music. That really was like the changing point. Yeah. Cause like no matter how I'm feeling, I can write it down, that's closed, done for the day. And then you move on to the next thing. Mm. So I think that really helped uh, for like mental struggles, definitely. Yeah, it's so important, man. It's so important to be able to like look back on that and stuff like that. And it's even the case of like, if you haven't got someone that you can speak to like all the time, mm. being able to kind of get that out, it's still some- all... You have to, because it's all, it's all psychological, isn't it? You think about it, but when you write it down, it's not physical. It's not out there in the world. Yeah. It's not stuck up in your head anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's out, it's in the paper like close it put it to the side give thanks for where i am where like where i've been in life like i can't complain like yeah. i'm doing as people say i'm doing so well for my age i'm doing so well in the career that i'm in so it's like i can't be upset or i can't i can't not that i can't but i shouldn't feel a certain way yeah because i'm very blessed and very privileged to be where i am today yeah, yeah, yeah. i kind of just have to it's about reminding myself in those moments of like no like i've done some crazy stuff that I've only ever dreamt of doing when I was 14, 15. Yeah. Like, well, I, I can't be feeling like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you're ever feeling down or a bit shit, you just go look back and have like, yeah. <laughs> well, let's okay. go through the camera a little bit. Or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've done oh, some good, crazy stuff. Good. Yeah. How old are you? 22. 22? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, no yeah. way. That's crazy. Fair play, man. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's mad. Um, yeah, I know you said. Um, you weren't too familiar with names and things like that. Because basically the reason why I'm asking is because a lot of what we do is involved with music and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Any artists that you listen to frequently, any of your oh, favorites? Straight off the top of my head, Larry June. I've Larry been hearing June, that name a lot. San Francisco uh, rapper. He makes, for me, best music. Really? Like, I love that artist. I think he's great. Um, he's like your typical, he's not your typical rapper. Like he talks about like getting your money, but like investing it into property. And like things like that, and Isn't it? like drinking smoothies, and he's like, he even like does a lot of manifesting. So he's like, "Good job, Larry." He's like another one, like things like that. He like manifests in his own songs. That's so sick. like I listen to it, and like it just puts you in a good mood. Yeah, like, you yeah. listen to it and feel great. Mm. Um, I think Philly right now is all of his new song. What was he really, really loved that song? Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, Larry June. Like, yeah, nice. anybody, anybody that asks me that, Larry June is instantly my first, uh, my first answer. Yeah. Got the music video. <laughs> I wish, man. Uh, he shoots with a really sick uh, London director. Um, directed like D D I R dot um, L X. I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head now. But he shoots like some of Larry June stuff when he when he's in the UK. Mm. Sick director, like yeah. very very sick director. Yeah, no, hundred um, percent. I've noticed that as well. I don't know if you've been paying too much attention, but the UK music video scene is so good at the moment. <laughs> oh. Because like we speak about this quite a few times, I've spoken about this a few times with artists and stuff, but and even from producers and stuff. But I just remember the UK trying to replicate the US by having like girls shaking her asses and money. And still stuff. happens, yeah. Still yeah, happens, yeah, yeah. I feel like that area is kind of dwindling now. People want clean cinematic videos. Yeah, man. Like people want like a story in there. Nux does it the best as well. Nux, Nux Laurel Kana. Yeah, the storytelling that they make in their music, but then also executing vision is yeah. like incredible. So sick. Um, I don't know if you know group lads. Um, they're called Don Prod. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, it's a big yeah. Guy, it's like sh big shout out to them. Yeah. I, obviously, I watch all their TikToks with the behind the scenes because it's so incredible to see. Yeah. And obviously, what they've built and the things that they've created is just it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's very, yeah. very crazy to see. And do you, what's your opinion on this um, big influx in like thirty-five millimeter filming and for photos and sixteen mil? I love it. It's nice. As yeah, well. I love it. Because I, I shoot on film cameras now. Like, really? Yeah. I got, well, not like actual film cameras. Yeah. But like the um, photography ones. Okay. So like I have my dad's 
um, his first ever camera from like, I think he bought it, it must be like 1980s, no 1980s way. camera, um, Olympus, Olympus ON1. Nice. It's like super old camera that he first started shooting on. But now I'm now able to shoot like film on it as well. So that's so cool. Crazy, crazy to like use and, and uh, almost like see what he used to see yeah, <laughs> in, yeah, in kind yeah, of a way. So cool. Could be able to being able to kind of see the modern world through an old school lens like yeah. that is so cool and it just i don't know it just adds this like warmth and character there's a you can't replicate and edit the same as what you get on film which is mad yeah you just can't you can ai it if you really wanted to you can try all the presets the feeling that you get of like having a raw film photo come out and like i don't edit my film pictures when when i get them i don't put them in lightroom however they're shot is how they're shot like i will not touch it because it, i think it, i think it ruins the the whole feel of it yeah, it's like if it's a little bit too dark or it's a little bit too grainy, it's like, well, that's what like, it is. That's just what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna go into a dark room and try to tweak the colors now. Like, yeah. that's how it comes out. Man, so have you ever shot um, like video on film? No, I haven't. Do you, how does that? Do you know how it works? I don't know how. It works. Um, I'm curious. So I was looking at film yeah, recording cameras and they're like Don Prod. Bags. Shout out Don Prod. They definitely do it the best. Yeah. Um, in one of their BTS, I literally watched it yesterday or like the day before. It's like it's like a huge crazy setup but they have like rolls of like the film and it's like a magazine as if like you're reloading the gun. So you put like the magazine on this camera, like they don't know how they do it, charge it in, whatever, um, and like hold it down like a trigger and start shooting with it. Yeah. And like, you so you hold it up and you hold it like that and it's like a trigger and you hear it go. Serious. Yeah. And then you wow. have to like, once that's used up, you put a different mag in, like it's like crazy, crazy um, actually to use. That's dedication to the cause as well. Yeah. That's crazy. But when you look at some of their videos, it, it comes out so clean. Mm. The way they can match in like a red camera on Ari with like what you used to use years and years and years ago is yeah, it's really, really good to see. Yeah, 100%. Because they do a lot of stuff with NEMS and like yeah. all of these videos a lot. Yeah, yeah. The color grading of their videos is something that I aspire to, aspire to be able to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, a, that's another thing as well. Like this is just like warm, comforting, like higher end feeling of like just color grading at the moment. Yeah, it's just less so nice. Well. And it translates quite well as well because I even saw uh, Cal Freezy's video with him, Randall and Chip. And In like Sahara Desert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that was shot quite nicely. Yeah, that was shot with, um, like I actually follow him, uh, Harry G Films. Okay. Yeah, like really good, once again, really good YouTube um, videographer and editor. Like mm. for me, with for YouTube, I just shoot editing like that youtube style takes a long time respect to all the beta squad editors especially yeah. james james is like he oversees a lot of the beta squad edits he is just incredible at what he does like he oversees pretty much all the beta edits and like Seriously. works on them himself yeah crazy so he's definitely definitely um a key part in beta as well i'd say yeah i don't think people understand like the mental turmoil editing can have on your brain oh. It's too much. Nuts. I'm editing a music video right now, and even now I'm sitting there. I'm like, like I don't know how people can just do editing. Mm. Like I, I like it when the, when the song's good. So like the one I'm working on now, I'm quite enjoying the process of yeah. doing it because I like the song, I like the feel of it, I like I like how I shot it. Yeah. So it just makes it easier for me to sit there and kind of go through. Yeah. When you're hearing a song a thousand times a day. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to the same spot, you, you'll learn the song instantly. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, that's the mad thing as well when you shoot and edit because we did our first, we directed our first, as, as I was saying to you before, we directed and shot our first video. But it's like, you have to hear the song so many yeah, times. Yeah, over and over, on the day, yeah. recording it, everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Yeah, interesting. Okay, right. Well, I want to do, we'll get back to some questions, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious for now. Um, Are you, I mean, you'll know most of these, but... I want to do a blind ranking top five. Okay. But YouTuber edition. <coughs> oh, okay. Yeah. There's a, I don't know if you, I'm hoping you'll know them all. Um, but we'll just go one by one and see, see what happens. Um, oh, this is a mix actually YouTubers and streamers. YouTubers and streamers. Okay. Yeah. So first is Kai. He's got to go one. One. Yeah. Already. Castle oh. up. Yeah. He yeah, has to. Really? If, yeah, I think if you look at what he does in the streaming world, he's just shy. He's, he's the first streamer ever to sign a deal with Nike. That's nuts. So he's one streamer of the year three times now. Mm. So I think as an overall like internet personnel and the come up, I I think 
I know there's going to be other names on there, which I would have liked to put one, but you have to give it to the guy. Like, so much respect to him. Yeah. Yeah. I just, he, he's been so successful just by being himself. Yeah. Like, I've never met him, but like, it seems like he would not be any different. Yeah. And him and, bit yeah. crazy, but I, I met him. He was another one that I had the joy of working with, um, like AMP as a whole. Uh, this was like last year. I can't remember when exactly last year all the dates are like modeled up yeah but um working with amp and like you know shooting like with kai and duke and agent and phantom like all those guys yeah uh chris as well like as you as i kind of said with speed like you know on camera they give it the energy that like you know do whatever the off camera they just you just have a normal conversation like it's nothing crazy yeah, yeah so yeah. i think i think that's always nice to see like they know work and they know real life it's yeah. not it's not all the one thing yeah 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 did Phantom eat any of your food? No. <laughs> but hopefully, uh, hopefully next time I see him, maybe we can share like, share like a little deli sandwich. <laughs> I want to know his recipe. Like, you know, is it all crazy in New York for it? So that's it. All right, we're going to the next one. Um, Aiden Ross. Used to watch him quite a lot. Um, and I don't know who the other name's going to be yet. I'll put five. Five, okay. I feel like it could be a bit harsh. I used to, I, I still watch him like every now and then, but not as much. But I feel like there's going to be some other big names. <laughs> <laughs> um, Philly? Uh, content, yeah, good content. He's now touching more into the streaming side of things as well. Yeah, bit of a crossover. Yeah. I'll put him three. Three. Okay. Um... Youngest, richest YouTuber, Ryan's Toys Reviews. <laughs> I don't know any of the content. <laughs> I don't know you, mate. I probably should have swapped Tim and Aiden Ross around. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he's got to go for them. Four. And your final final is Nick Ocado Avocado. <laughs> <laughs> this is a horrible list. Can I, can I swear, on, swear on here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, is, that is a shit list. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Can't we do it? Yeah, no, I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know how he's I don't know how he's made second, but yeah. <laughs> sorry, Philly. <laughs> Probably could have gone a bit higher. So you got Kaisen at number one, Nick Ricardo <sighs> number two, Young Philly three, Ryan's Toys Reviews four, and Aiden five. Yeah. You happy with that? No, a terrible list. <laughs> <laughs> that is that probably might be the most off ranked <laughs> ever. <laughs> really? The order um, should be the order should be Kai, Kai, Philly. Aiden Ross, Toys, Nico, Avocado. Yeah. That's how the list should have went. <laughs> yeah. He scares the shit out of me. He's crazy, man. I, I, I haven't even watched his videos. I just see it on like, you know when you're like uh, on Snapchat and you see like sna the Snapchat like stories and highlights. Yeah. I just see it on there. I just think like, this guy is, I hope he's okay, but the guy seems insane. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like the, Social media has just like taken over his mind, just taken over his whole personality. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Do you? Um, you don't have to name any names or anything, but like the guys that you surround yourself with and are working with and stuff, they all seem so sound, and they're like they've all got a goal, they want to work towards it. Do you ever experience kind of like any like negativity in the space and stuff? Because there's people that are just like dicks, and mm. they're just kind of like honestly, no, no, no. That's, that's amazing. Like that's amazing. They are. I give them so much like respect and everything mm -hmm. because the amount of stuff that they have done for me and like the places that I've been, the people who I've met, the things that I've seen and just how nice and friendly they are as well. Like that, just not a bad bone in their body. Yeah. Like, I, I love all of them. I think they're great. Um, it's nice to actually say, you know, we've actually become friends now. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. Really, really incredible people. And obviously the people behind the scenes, like Simon, um, who's kind of like the manager and then, Sam as well, beta squad producer, Tamika, like second beta squad producer. Like they all just do amazing things. Super nice people, super genuine. So yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing to hear. That's amazing to hear. Cause it's just kind of allowed you to do what you need to do. And I feel like as well, I've noticed this so much in um, the creative space, like all the genuine guys and girls that they kind of, I feel like they're like that and they're happy to be around everybody because yeah. everyone gave them chances as well. Yeah. So they're like happy to put other people on and have people around and, yeah, I, yeah, and they've they've put me onto loads. <laughs> yeah, they've put me onto loads of things. Obviously, like Taylor, when I was younger, he put me on. 
So like, hopefully now that I'm like building myself up, hopefully I can put him onto more stuff. Like me and him have hopefully got some exciting things that we're gonna work on ourselves, like more our own content. So as you say, get in front of the camera, maybe uh, maybe me and him probably might start doing that and just come up with ideas. So yeah, something, something to look forward to. Yeah, no, 100%. And on that, have you? What I know, you mentioned Australia and and a few other places. What was the kind of like? Um, did you have like a pinch me moment, like first time where you're like, "What the hell?" Probably first time I started shooting with Vader, probably. Really? Yeah. Like just, I was how old was Shake I? Your hands and stuff. We, not as much, almost, yeah. almost. Not on, not on camera anyway. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> always, that's always a benefit. Done. Yeah, yeah. As long as the job's sorted, but um. Yeah, just kind of seeing all of them there at like first time um, with like, you know, Johnny Carey was there. Uh, me and him have become like really good friends now. Like he does, him and his boy like run like at this uh, rave thing. Um, so like now I shoot his like the rave content for him and his boy. Um, now I work with like Chunks. I just come back to YouTube. So now I'm shooting more for his personal channel. Um, yeah, like working with Darkest Man every now and then, which is obviously incredible. Harry Pinero. And then obviously all the boys within beta and helping them on their own personal channels, not just the beta's channel, is like a huge like. It all started from one video with Kenny. Now I'm doing beta plus more, like do other corporate shoots as well. So yeah, not not all YouTube I shoot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do other shoots as well. Amazing. What's it like getting um? It's like getting rave content when you're like on the job. Love it. Really? Yeah, because like, I only really, really do raves with johnny i did uh, i had a period where i was doing quite a lot of raves um but like you just get like a few drinks tokens i know it's not good to drink a drink on work but for me it just takes the nerve off a little bit yeah, yeah, so yeah. especially when they're going to shove like a big camera in their face and they're like oh you're like you know guys want a picture you ask like a thousand people like do you want a picture hey right, can i get a video like, it just thinks oh like it cringes me out sometimes because <laughs> 50 60 percent of the time it's going to be a no <laughs> really yeah like yeah because people are either doing the dodgy stuff or yeah. they don't want to be on film. So yeah, it's like, yeah, you yeah. have to respect it as well. But then I've also got a job that I need to shoot content here. Yeah. yeah, So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's a hard balance, but um, no, I, I quite enjoy them. Like I listen, I still listen to, still go to raise every now and then. Yeah. Not as much. Um, but yeah, still enjoy it. Nice. Yeah, no, that's um, that, that wide variety as well. It's just, do you know what it is? It's like the, and the reason why I want, like I like doing these podcasts with like you know people like yourself and, and whatever, it's just to kind of showcase that there's so many options. Like I understand kind of like going to uni, it's important if you want to be a doctor, loyal. The kind of, of course, of course, kind of bullshit. But it's like allowing, you know, some some kid might watch this and be like, I want to do that. Yeah, of course, yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like knowing, like them knowing that they don't have to go down that traditional route. <laughs> I did. The reason why I didn't go to uni is because I did an apprenticeship when I was uh, 16 in secondary school. Mm. Um, and you're like, you have two weeks, I think it's like year 10 or like year 11. You have two weeks of like, you're not in school because you're not meant to do like some apprentice work. So I did it with a uh, company that my dad managed to find, local base as well, though it had an office in Morden at the time, which is uh, where I'm from. Um, and she told me, I remember this, it was her and her, I think they're I think they're engaged. I don't want to say it. I don't know. I don't know exactly. Maybe like boyfriend or, or something. Um, super nice people, like so welcoming. But she said um, like her partner wasted like four years at uni because he could have been in the field making his own connections, shooting his own stuff, and building his own portfolio rather than going to uni. But obviously, like my boy Taylor, he went to uni, but he still made good connections. He yeah. still was out in the field. He was still shooting. Yeah. So, you know, there's still both sides of looking at it. I'm yeah. not going to say don't go to uni as a rule off. Yeah, Because, yeah, you know, Taylor obviously knows a lot more about studios, about lighting, about bigger cameras than me. Because I just went out with my A7 III and just started shooting. But he's obviously knowing how to use like Reds, Aries, all those crazy, all those crazy, crazy cameras. Yeah. Because he went to uni. Yeah. And, you know, you're still going to get a good network there. Yeah. Maybe not work network, work, work network. <laughs> yeah. But um, more, uh, more friendship networks yeah i would say so but where i just went straight out i you know as i say got in touch with you know some cool youtubers um like other production companies so i was able to kind of build my own network uh there as well yeah yeah no for sure because it's, it's mad i mean you know, i even experienced it myself like everyone that i went to school with like i'm not even joking like 
eighty percent of them didn't know whether they wanted to go to uni or yeah. uni or not. And then like three weeks later, they're like, "Oh well, put in my application." Did you go to uni? Yeah, I dropped out. You dropped out. Yeah. And were you like a year in, three months, a day? <laughs> well, I was two two years in. Two years. I did first year, but I got first. But then obviously it doesn't even count. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then like it, there was a moment where I was in class and I was just sat there. I was like, I'm paying nine grand a year for this, and they're teaching me how to write a CV, mm. to which you probably learned when company. you were like sixteen. Yeah, and I'm like, why am I writing a CV to go and work for this big company? I'm literally here to do business management. I want to learn how to manage a business, not mm. be a part of a business. Oh, a business, yeah. They're like, yeah, you want to make sure it looks all prim and proper and give you a good personal statement. I'm like, what do you mean? Why am I sending my CV to myself? But, uh, and and if not, just just go out and learn it. That's like, what, yeah, of course. YouTube has been the biggest help for me, like throughout all of my filming. 100%. I've learned how to edit off YouTube. I've learned how to film off YouTube. The equipment that I have, I've all studied off of YouTube. 100%. It's like. YouTube's probably been more of a help, I hate to say this, than probably my teachers when I was in school. Yeah. <laughs> because like YouTube's taught me how to work out my taxes, <laughs> help me with finances. Yeah. But wasn't getting taught that in maths then. So Yeah, I know. And there's it is not to get all conspiracy theory, but there's there is a system in place. Definitely. It's not for the people. Definitely, definitely. Hundred yeah. percent. It's, it's mad to see now because a lot of people are kind of coming towards that and mm-hmm. kind of realizing that. Waking up if you want to say so. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah, no, hundred percent. So yeah, no, this is why I like doing doing this because it just gives people that opportunity you know um way off topic going back to something just because it just popped up in my head yeah, um is it true johnny got an opportunity to be part of beta but then moved in with a girl yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's been that's been a topic recently uh, i know he, um johnny was speaking about it in his podcast um a very good friend of mine michael like Michael Hamilton, he just released a new song as well today. So go go and make the plug in for him. There you go. One that, one by that. one, go stream it, Michael Hamilton. <laughs> um, so yeah, him and Johnny um, were speaking about it on his podcast, and I also know Chunks mentioned it on the Chunks and Philly show as well. Yeah. Um, I never, I wasn't around Beta at that time, but yeah, hearing that story definitely definitely made me laugh. <laughs> but then some people are like, oh, Johnny would have been great in Beta, but then other people are also like, the dynamic would have been too different because i know johnny's content is a bit crude sometimes he likes he pushes the boat with some of the jokes <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. put it put it that way um but once again some of it's great content and he seems to be killing it in his own way anyway yeah so. yeah 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 loves it i mean yeah become really good friends with him um just a really nice person like filmed me out to ibifa we shot a music video in ibifa together uh that was like yeah incredible and now also working with his brother on on certain things as well so mm. All from all from YouTube, which is just crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what's so? What's your goal? Like, what do you want to like? Where do you envision yourself in the future? I can never answer this question exactly because never know where the world's going to be. Never know where life is going to take me. As as you know, like one minute I'm here, just got back from Italy, and the week before I was in Qatar, then Monday going to Atlanta, mm. the end of the month going to Tenerife. So it's like there's nothing set. So I don't know. Um, I think a rough goal would always be the traveling filming. Like as long as I'm traveling and filming, if obviously I can do it with my partner now, I would love to do that. And just like, you know, shoot our own content, like of me traveling, do the cinematics that I've probably always dreamt of doing. That would be cool. Renovating that camper van and taking like six months off to travel Europe in the, ca- in the camper van would obviously probably be Gotta still one of my real goals. Yeah, I have to. Slowly, slowly, um, but surely I'm definitely getting the places in step to make it happen, which is nice. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe create my own brand, maybe create, you know, Jones filming as something properly, but no idea. <laughs> See where life takes me. Would you consider only like a production company or like a um, having like a team of editors that you manage or something, or like videographers? That's only if I, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, that's only if I actually go down being in front of the, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> being in front of the camera a bit more. Yeah. That's probably the only way I'm going to be able to go down that route. But it's not a vision of mine right now. So yeah. I wouldn't say no to it yeah. because there's still a possibility. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to say yes because I haven't opened my eyes up to do that yet. Yeah. Okay. And um, with the camper van, have you got a camper van in mind? Do you know which one you want? Yeah. Mercedes Sprinter. Because really? I'm, t- I'm, I'm 6'3". So yeah. they're like a bit taller. So <laughs> I could, I'll still have to probably bend over in it a little bit. But yeah. I could probably still stand up somewhat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it out. 
redo it all. Yeah, literally. That would be so cool. Because you, I've, I've seen some, some content of like these like travelers and stuff. I'm like, yo, you've got all of that in that yeah. in there. Like, but I have to re rethink some life choices of buying clothes and things like yeah. that. Just got to minimalize minimalize everything. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, yeah, if people can do it, I'm sure. Like, if other people can, why can't I? Yeah, that's exactly. Like, you know, another goat as well. Con films who films a lot of Sidemen. Yeah. Like he's got his own YouTube channel. Guy's got like over a million subscribers, but he's also a cameraman for Sidemen. Crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. And he's also doing like brand deals of like MetaQuest and and like Gymshark. Yeah. But he's a YouTube cam up as well. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? It puts it in perspective, you know, you never know what you can do. Yeah, he, he seems lovely as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, he, that's, he's, he, he's mad with the sponsors in a good way. Like he's yeah, got yeah. a sponsor for every video, like, and it like works well. Yeah, it's, yeah and obviously because he's in that YouTube you know, YouTube space. He knows the timings of when to do ads. He knows how to talk about ads. He knows scripts. He knows how to be an actual personality in front of the camera. Yeah. I think as I work more and as it kind of opens my own ideas up of to what it will be like in front of the camera working with Bayer, then maybe it'll open the door for me a bit more. Yeah. But at the same time, I love being behind the camera because, you know, I get to do like brand work. So like recently I've been working a lot with Timberland, um, but hence, hence the Timberland. Um, <laughs> But like, I love doing the corporate side of things when it's jobs like that because, you know, the production company that I'm working with, they're really fun. Generation works are really nice people, um, like all welcoming, super nice. Brought me on to some cool jobs. I did a job with End Puma last year in December, which was like amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and just all from reaching out and networking, I managed to get these as a client. And now they're bringing me on to like do photography, videography and the edits for these jobs. So I think they kind of like it of where instead of reaching out to three individual people, they can just reach out to me. I'll get, you know, as they said, they like the content. So high quality work yeah. um, and efficient. So, yeah, I, th- I think it works out quite nicely. Yeah, no, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing as well, like you say, it's just, I mean, for everyone working in in this space, it's just like anything can happen oh, like, for sure. in the best way. It's just like an opportunity to do that do that do that it's like oh now i'm gonna go down here and do that a little bit mm. so with all the youtubers doing music yeah um so like when chunks was making music very good artist really very good artist like it just makes sense so so much it and that, that that's exciting isn't it really like just having that prospect of being like i don't yeah, know what's yeah. gonna happen no no idea yeah the world the world well england's already in a recession so <laughs> you don't know where that's gonna take us but we had covid three four years ago yeah you just don't know what can happen. So yeah. it's like prepare for the worst kind of thing, but you know, take it as it comes. Yeah. And make the most out of every opportunity. Exactly. hundred percent. As you say, you know, pinch myself moments of where, let me think about this a bit, m- bit more and a bit longer to like really appreciate, really appreciate where it. I've come and you know, the th- people that I've met, the things that I've seen, as I said before. Yeah. No, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Uh, crazy. Fucking future. So crazy world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> Um, and then one of the last questions I had was, um, if you could film a dream collab between two YouTubers, what would it be topic wise? And where would it be? Between two YouTubers or two people. Yeah. Could be, it could be, yeah, let's say it could be a chef. It could be a YouTuber. It could be a rapper. It could be an actor, but you have to put it together. Tell me. I would like to, it's a bit of a wild one. Um, okay. My we flatmate, um, Jacob, he makes music. Um, obviously, we met when I moved to Jamaica, still stuck to be friends when we were like three. Yeah. We're now like 22. We're now living in London together, which is incredible. That's sick. Um, so I'd like to hit, do mu- I'd like to shoot a music video for him and my, my boy from Malden Likes. I'd like to do a collaboration of like, we fly to Jamaica, so we shoot like half the video of like Jake of likes in Jamaica, but then we shoot my flatmate side, Jacob, as a Jamaican artist or like kind of Jamaican patois in um, London. That's so we kind of get like you know two different sides of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we'd need ridiculous budget for flights <laughs> and everything <laughs> like that, but you can make that happen. I, I think it'd just be a cool video. Yeah, that sounds pretty sick. And like uh, the first kind of proper video that I shot was when I was in Jamaica in 2019. Mm. I shot it for my flatmate and another one of my good friends, Elijah. Mm. Um, that was like just kind of run a gun style. And I was like, oh my God, like this is sick. Like I like the song, 
the visuals are probably looking back on it aren't that great but like in the moment i'm shooting i'm thinking that yeah this is cold right yeah, yeah. this is what i want to do yeah that's so sick I've, I've massive props by the way you could have literally picked anyone in the world and you picked your two yeah players. yeah so, much respect, <laughs> that. that's so sick yeah you can always see like central c and ed sheeran or dave but it would be obviously amazing to shoot for those people. Mm. But I think I'll get more out of shooting a crazy video for my boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then work with like a six figure budget and I'll get too nervous because I'm not at six figure budget level. Yeah. And much rather just do run and gun, just, you know, get all like nice shots, clean shots, execute well. And then, you know, my friends and us, we can look back on these and think, remember we did like two trips to one side of the world to the other and we shot something crazy. Much yeah. rather have that. Yeah, no, 100%. It's way more personable as well. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more meaning. Yeah, yeah. As you say, like you get to look back on it and think, like, wow, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay, cool. Well, I think we've covered quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's really good to have a chat and just kind of like go into that world of what you do, how you do it, what it's been like. Um, definitely had some questions that I had that had been answered, which is which is yeah, really <laughs> yeah, 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 amazing for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, definitely really enjoyed uh having a chat um have you got anything that you want to shout out or anything or um my instagram instagram and tiktok <laughs> that's it that's it lead the followers jones filming um on instagram and uh tiktok um my mum and dad thank you for <laughs> thank you for raising me to be the person i am uh I love that. thank you obviously my dad especially he's helped me a lot with you know equipment the right things to get the right things to buy and organizing helps me with my taxes so a huge thank you to him but then also for my mum for like mental support guiding me through life giving me good advice things like that um and my friends as well taylor obviously putting me on to a lot of jobs beta squad giving me the experiences of life that i've had um i think that's it and nice. all, all my friends watching so yeah let's go <laughs> nice one good stuff amazing see ya thank you amazing that was brilliant. That was amazing. <laughs>